Okay, let's look at the Fine Gael, uh, with the Sinn Féin budget proposals. Um, what are the four central features of your proposals, Pierce? Well, first of all, we look at a deficit reduction of just under 2.5 billion euro. We believe that... And more the same as the government is going for now. Yeah, roughly the, the same target um, that the government are, are planning. Uh, we believe that there has to be issues that were caused in the last six austerity budgets addressed. So, for example, we have over three quarters of a billion euro in additional spending and tax backs, which makes up abolishing the property tax, taking 296,000 low-income earners out of paying the USC. We also look at areas such as children, where we would provide uh, half the school books free of charge, um, additional school meals to 500 schools, um, rolling out, extending the issue in terms of um, the, the fuel allowance by another three weeks and a number of other measures in terms of bilateral ear, uh, cochlear implants for the 200 deaf children who are waiting on that list and, and, and the, the clock is ticking on them. And we do that then through taxation and spending measures, about 30 different measures. It comes down about 1.4 billion euro of taxation measures and 1 billion ones in savings. Of those measures are? Well, there's a number of ones, for example, there's issues that we haven't addressed before. We have uh, a 20 cent hike in the, the cost of cigarettes with the funding that would be ring-fenced for revenue to target uh, black market activity. Revenue themselves believe that they could bring in an additional 100 million uh, if they had uh, extra people recruited within the, the system. We have a 3% tax on, on betting, on gambling. Uh, we have standardisation. How, how could that operate on uh, gambling on websites? Well, the government is actually bringing in legislation to introduce a 1% uh, levy on, on gambling. It will bring in 20 million. It's to be in, in effect next but, year. But how does it operate if people gamble on websites in Britain or in Hong Kong? All, all there, there's a whole different new system coming in in relation to the regulation of gambling. So every um, every website that accesses the state that you can access from the state will have to be licensed uh, under this new new regime, and you can bring in a one percent. They plan to bring in a one percent. We bl uh, we okay. plan to bring in a three percent. Maybe we talk about that again. Don't see how There's works. areas in relation to the standardisation of tax and pe tax, tax uh, pension mm -hmm. tax reliefs. Um, we want to standardise it to twenty percent. Uh, this is uh, a long-term commitment of ourselves, and eighty percent of those reliefs uh, lie in the hands of the twenty percent of highest earners in the state. We want to int introduce a third rate of tax at 48% um, on the portion of income above €100,000. And then there's a range of saving measures, which again, um, there's particular savings in health, uh, looking at uh, patented drugs, generic drugs. Uh, there's areas in education where we want to um, uh, get away from the subsidisation of private education over a three-year period. Uh, and there's uh, all, uh, small other things. Okay, Damien, well. it's, uh, 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 reading through this, uh, th this isn't top of the head stuff. This is well worked out, the Sinn Féin proposals. Um, do you go along with it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very well worked out. There's a, there's a, like last year, there's a hole in it, though, along the way, because we can't find the 350 million that you, you said you want to reduce, keep the VAT right at 9%. We can't find that 300 million. So, no, in, in fairness, out of the whole lot, there's only one or two holes. Compared to last year, it's not as bad as it was. The overall, look, the, the stuff in here is, is nice stuff, and it's all positive. I mean, like, that's what you're looking for. It's a little bit, it, it must come to sure it's reality, because we can't <coughs> achieve all this, from what I can see. The question mark, I would say, is the two things. The wealth tax is in here again, and that's questionable the whole time, because wealth is very movable in Ireland, and number one. But number two, you want to go higher rate tax, and you want to increase taxes. And it's a strong view, we, we discussed this last year as well, of mine and of our party as well, that if you increase taxes on jobs, you, are, you run the risk of risking jobs and job losses as opposed to job gains. We're so doing very well. Increasing in taxes on I incomes mm -hmm. of over 100,000. How is that a tax on jobs? It does a tax on jobs. And if you, if you listen to the IDA, I've had this conversation last as well, the IDA is very clear that, that in terms of growth taxes and taxes that are looked at for jobs, corporation taxes first, income taxes next. And any company looking to locate here or here at the moment, look at the rate of the, the, the effective rate of tax and the, and the income tax rates as well. If you bring in 48% above 100,000, that means any money you earn above that amount, you're paying about 59-60% tax. Now, if you're a managing director of a company, would you bring your company here to hand over 60% of a lot of your wages into the tax system? Would you do that? No. You might choose to go someplace else. And that's, I mean, that's the fact that's there. It's discussed by IDA. I chair the Jobs Committee. No, no we discussed that. Okay. Okay. Before, before I go back to Pearson, now, do you agree with that point, uh, Willie, that uh, Damon is making, that uh, if you increase uh, taxes on people earning 100000 and above, 
that it will affect jobs that people won't come here and establish new industries? No, not necessarily, but I, I, I do agree with Damien on one thing, that there is a tipping point, obviously. I mean, you know, looking at Pierce's proposal there uh, in relation to income tax, according to my calculations, at the moment the top marginal rate of tax uh, for a, a self-employed person is 55%. This, the, the, the net result of this would be that the top marginal rate would be 62%. 62%. The, the effective rate, though, is, is much, much lower. Yeah, the effective but, rate is about 32 33%. But, but, yeah, yeah, but we have, to, we have to look at what we're doing on the margins, Vincent. Unfortunately, we have to look at what but, we're doing on the margins. But even if you take people earning over 100,000, the, effect, the effective rate would be 38 39%. They have look, different I, figure look, in the... In absolutely. Look, I, I agree. I, look, you no, know, no, even I'm, people earning over yeah. 200,000, I agree. It's I, about 40%. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Look, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But, you know, that being said, you know, we have to be careful here. Uh, we're in a situation where we have reduced success of this government and its predecessor have been involved in, in, in the work of reducing the number of people in the public sector. The private sector is the main driver of jobs at the moment. And we, we must ensure that they have a proper incentive to create jobs. I mean, you know, you take a a person who goes out, who, who, who takes a risk, goes out into the marketplace, sets up on their own. If they're reasonably successful, what we're saying to them now is that, um, you know, every euro you earn over 100,000, you're expected to give 62 cents of that back to the state. That's, 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 that's a difficult... That's, that's not a difficult, how it works. Well, but well it is, Vincent. My, it my, apology, my apology, Vincent, but it is how it works. But it isn't there how are certain it works. tax credits, etc. Look at, et look at, look at the rev figures from the revenue commissioners. And people earning 200,000 and more pay at most, at most, including the USC charge, mm. about 42% of the effective tax rate is about 42%. Yes, yeah. this is yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't take This is 48% proposal. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't take away from the, it doesn't take away from the fact that a top marginal rate of 62% is getting us back to the bad old days. You know, when Alan Dukes was Minister for Finance and the country was going down the tubes. I mean, to say, it, 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 it's demonstrable that top very high marginal rates of tax are a disincentive. They are a disincentive to economic activity, especially when you're depending on the private sector to okay. create jobs. Now, look, having said that, I do agree. I do agree that, you know, the last three budgets were certainly regressive. They were aggressive. They took more from the poor than they did from the well-off. And we have to rebalance that. And, you know, whether we like it or not, we have to look at these top earners to see what, 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 what further contribution they can make. We will be producing our own proposals on Thursday, and uh, I'll be happy to talk to you about those when they're published. Deal with the ob okay. well, objections. Just a, a couple of things. First of all, in relation to the wealth tax, it's not part of our deficit reduction proposal. The reason being is the department themselves will not cost the, the proposal or can't cost the proposal at this point in time. And this year we've not only costed these proposals through parliamentary questions, but we've engaged with the Department of Finance and the Department of Public Expenditures costing, budgetary costing units. So they couldn't do it, so that's why we didn't put it in there. But it is ring-fenced, whatever money it brings in for job creation. In relation to the VAT issue that, that you mentioned, we do believe that the VAT should be retained this year uh, at, at the current level. And how that would be funded is through the way it's funded at this point in time, through the pension levy. It's not, again, part of our deficit reduction proposal. It's in the back of the <coughs> document. But, and the, the pension levy reduction would, wouldn't be 0.6%. It would be somewhere around 38 to fund the VAT measure this year. In relation to the arguments that the IDA tell you that it'll scare off jobs if you increase um, the, the marginal rate of tax, and the effective rate of tax is what people actually care about, what, how much tax that they're paying out. Let me say this here. There's only one party in, in the Arctis at this point in time that doesn't agree with taxing those above 100,000, including Willie, Willie O'Dea's party had a conversion last year that they want to increase uh, taxation on those above €100,000. They went for a USC, which is a more blunt instrument because it captures all earnings and doesn't allow for any relief. So the 3% really is 3% on everything above it. I have figures here from, the, from the, the department about the jobs that were promoted by the IDA from salary bans from 20000 up to 150000 over a six-year period since 2007. Four of those years, not one job was promoted by the IDA on the band between 100,000 and 150,000. In two of the years there was, and they're, they're, they're small in number. The reality is that the vast majority of IDA employees are earning below 50,000 <coughs> euros. So, you're talking about IDA employees? I, IDA. This is the, this is the argument IDA that has been... IDA companies. IDA and companies, IDA. supported companies. Sorry, Sorry IDA supported companies. Yeah. That off the, off the about 46,000 uh, jobs that they promoted, 
they supported in, in those six years. Out of four of the years, not one of the jobs uh, ranged between 100 and 150,000. So the idea that this would scare off investment is wrong. Um, but you do have to make choices, and like there is difficult choices in every budget. We started our work on this alternative budget, to tell you the truth, Vincent, in last January. Like we've been engaged in a very thorough process. There has to be a decision how you actually reduce the burden on some people, and at the same time have a fair taxation and fair savings model in the other. Like this isn't just about tax and high earners. Remember, there's nearly 300,000 people who would see a reduction in tax as a result of taking them out of the USC. There's 1.8 million households which would have less property tax to pay. But it's also about stimulating the economy and investing in the economy and getting people back to work. We had a presentation, I'll say this just finally, we had a presentation today from the Department of Finance officials, right? They're telling us this year, growth rates are zero. Growth rates are zero. And I put the question to them, if we were told this in 2008, that we'd be sitting in this room in 2013 and you telling us that there has been no growth rate in the Irish economy, would we have, as a country, would we have followed the direction of austerity for the last six years? And I genuinely think nobody would have said, yes, we would have. This, the, the direction that this country has gone in has been wrong. It has failed. We can see it in the figures from mortgage to unemployment uh, to immigration. It has failed and failed dramatically. It's time for a new direction. This doesn't have all the solutions. It's our contribution to a fair society and the way to give families a break.